Margaret's Muffins. Margaret's mother made Margaret six muffins to take to school and share. For Margaret's teacher, Miss Eloise, Margaret's mother made a honey pear muffin. For the school's janitor, Mr. Humphrey, Margaret's mother made a banana chocolate chip muffin. For Margaret's principal, Mr. Egan, Margaret's mother made an apple walnut muffin. For the crossing guard, Miss Agnes, Margaret's mother made a cranberry orange muffin. For Margaret's best friend, Millie, Margaret's mother made a blueberry buttermilk muffin. And for Margaret, her mother made a white chocolate raspberry muffin. It was Margaret's favorite muffin in the whole wide world. Margaret's mother carefully placed the muffins into a muffin tray with six separate spots to hold each muffin. And she said, now don't tip the tray, Margaret. If you tip the tray, the muffins will fall out. Margaret's mother handed Margaret the tray, which Margaret carefully held with both her little hands. What don't you want to do, her mother asked her. Tip the tray, Margaret replied. And why, her mother asked her. Because the muffins will fall out, Margaret said. And what happens if the muffins fall out, her mother asked. No one will get a muffin, Margaret replied, because a muffin that hits the ground will have dirt and hair and germs on it, and no one wants a muffin with those things on it. And because those things make muffins very unhealthy, Margaret's mother said. Margaret nodded her head in agreement and began her slow, steady walk to school. Margaret lived two blocks from her school. The walk normally took eleven and a half minutes if she didn't get distracted by the Joneses' new puppy Titus or by the flowers in Miss Evie's garden. The flowers had such bright colors and such sweet smells. It was easy to spend five or six minutes looking at them and smelling them. Last year, Margaret had to walk to school hand in hand with her mother, but Margaret was a year older and, as her mother liked to say, a year wiser. And a girl who is a year wiser can be trusted to walk two blocks on her own. Margaret's mother also knew there were a lot of people keeping an eye on Margaret the whole way. People like Miss Agnes, the crossing guard, and Miss Evie, who was always in her garden, and Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and even their cute puppy Titus. Margaret's first real challenge would be walking down the front stairs of her house without tipping the tray of muffins. There were six steps, and Margaret stepped down five of those steps successfully. But when she stepped off the fifth step, she missed the sixth step completely and stumbled. Miss Agnes's cranberry orange muffin popped out of the tray and fell down, down, down to the ground. Miss Agnes's cranberry orange muffin then rolled down the front yard and into a bush where a deer was hiding. The deer sniffed the sweet treat at its feet and could smell the cranberries inside of it. Deer love cranberries. In one big bite, the deer ate the entire muffin, cranberries, oranges and all. Oh dear no, Margaret cried. Now Miss Agnes won't get a muffin. But that deer looked so happy after eating Miss Agnes's cranberry orange muffin. I'm sure Miss Agnes will be happy knowing her cranberry orange muffin brought so much joy to others. Margaret reached the end of the walkway to her house and stepped onto the sidewalk. That's when a family of squirrels ran past her feet. Margaret stopped suddenly so she wouldn't step on a squirrel. When she stopped, Mr. Egan's apple walnut muffin popped out of the muffin tray and fell down, down, down to the ground. The sound of Mr. Egan's apple walnut muffin hitting the ground made the family of squirrels stop, just like Margaret had a moment earlier. Squirrels love walnuts. The family of squirrels circled around the muffin. In a few big bites, the squirrels ate the entire muffin, walnuts, apples, and all. Oh, nuts, Margaret cried. Now Mr. Egan won't get a muffin. But those squirrels looked so happy after eating Mr. Egan's apple walnut muffin. I'm sure Mr. Egan will be happy, too, knowing his apple walnut muffin brought so much joy to others. Margaret carefully walked along the sidewalk with her tray of remaining muffins. Tall oak trees lined both sides of the street Margaret lived on. And when she walked under one of the trees, something swinging from branch to branch high up above caught her eye. When she tipped her head back to look up, she also tipped the tray of muffins. Mr. Humphrey's banana chocolate chip muffin popped out of the tip tray and fell down, down, down. But before it hit the ground, a monkey swung down from the tree and caught it. Monkeys love bananas. In one big bite, the monkey ate the entire muffin, bananas, chocolate chips, and all. That's bananas, Margaret cried. Now Mr. Humphrey won't get a muffin. But that monkey looked so happy after eating Mr. Humphrey's banana chocolate chip muffin. I'm sure Mr. Humphrey will be happy too, knowing his banana chocolate chip muffin brought so much joy to others. 
The tray of muffins was lighter now, so Margaret had an easier time holding it straight. Margaret walked past Titus without stopping to give him a head scratch, because she was sure bending down to scratch him would make another muffin fall out. Then Margaret walked right past Miss Evie's garden without giving the flowers a sniff, because she was sure bending down to have a smell would make another muffin fall out. Margaret was determined not to lose another muffin. When Margaret passed Miss Evie's garden, she heard footsteps clomping behind her. Whatever it was following her, it was also grunting loudly. Margaret stopped and turned around. There, standing on his back two legs, was the biggest, furriest bear Margaret had ever seen. Margaret's mother had always said, If you ever see a bear, stand perfectly still. Then, when it passes by, back away as slow as a snail. But this bear knew Margaret was there, and Margaret knew bears loved honey. She removed Miss Eloise's honey pear muffin from the tray and raised it up, up, up towards the bear's mouth. The bear licked its lips, then gently took the muffin from Margaret's hand. In one big bite, the bear ate the entire muffin, honey pears and all. Grr, Margaret growled. Now Miss Eloise won't get a muffin. But I'm safe, and that bear looked so happy after eating Miss Eloise's honey pear muffin. I'm sure Miss Eloise will be happy too, knowing her honey pear muffin brought so much joy to others. Margaret turned a corner and saw her school. The playground was full of kids playing. Margaret saw her best friend Millie playing in the playground. Margaret was excited because Millie's blueberry buttermilk muffin was one of the two muffins that remained. So Margaret walked faster and faster and faster because she knew how happy the muffin would make Millie. And the faster Margaret walked, the more the tray of muffins bounced up and down. Margaret's walk soon turned into a run, and that's when Millie's blueberry buttermilk muffin popped out of the tray and fell down, down, down to the ground. Margaret thought someone was laughing at her, but it was just a pair of mockingbirds swooping down to peck at the muffin lying on the ground. Mockingbirds love blueberries. In a hundred pecks or so, the mockingbirds ate the entire muffin, blueberries, buttermilk, and all. That's not funny, Margaret cried. Now Millie won't get a muffin. But those mockingbirds sure did look happy after eating Millie's blueberry buttermilk muffin. I'm sure Millie will be happy too, knowing her blueberry buttermilk muffin brought so much joy to others. Margaret had one muffin left, and it happened to be the muffin Margaret's mother made just for her. When Margaret reached the classroom, she removed the muffin from the tray and held it securely in her hands. This will be the most delicious muffin I've ever eaten, Margaret said. What kind of muffin is it? asked a little girl named Mallory. Mallory sat next to Margaret in class, and Mallory was always hungry because she never brought a lunch to school. In fact, Margaret had never seen Mallory eat anything while at school. It's a raspberry white chocolate muffin, Margaret said. It's my most favorite muffin in the whole wide world. The little girl's tummy rumbled. I love raspberries and white chocolate, she said. Maybe one day my mom will make me a raspberry white chocolate muffin. Margaret looked at her raspberry white chocolate muffin and then looked at Mallory. She thought about the deer and the squirrels and the monkey and the bear and the mockingbirds, and she remembered how happy they were after eating the muffins. Maybe, Margaret thought, the muffins were meant for them all along. Maybe my raspberry white chocolate muffin isn't meant for me at all. Margaret held her raspberry white chocolate muffin out to Mallory and said, I think this muffin was actually made for you. For me? Mallory asked. For you, Margaret repeated. Mallory took the muffin from Margaret's hand and ate a small piece from the top. It really is the most delicious muffin, she said. I think I'm going to eat it in tiny bites so I can enjoy it all day long. Mallory looked so happy after having a bite of Margaret's raspberry white chocolate muffin. And Margaret was happy too, knowing her raspberry white chocolate muffin brought so much joy to Mallory. The End <laughs>